Many 3D artists are currently using normal map and displacement map incorrectly. And I can't entirely exclude myself from that. For instance, the polyheaven add-on, which I also use quite often, imports the materials in a wrong way. Because normal and displacement are both generally activated. Why this can have a bad impact on your render results is what I want to show you in this video. And let me ensure you, it won't be complicated. I have broken everything down simply so that by the end of this video, you will always know exactly when and how to use normal and displacement maps. So let's get started. So at first, what are normal maps and displacement maps about? These two textures are included in PBR material texture sets. And these are the common materials you can download as textures from platforms like Polyheaven. PBR texture sets typically consist of sets of five different images. Each of these images are representing a specific property of the same surface. Usually we have five different individual images of the same surface. These are ambient occlusion, the color map, the roughness map, the normal map and the displacement map. Today we will focus on the last two. Briefly summarized, AO, ambient occlusion, is like a slide shading map where darker areas appear wherever objects, such as stones for example, are close to each other. The color map is not just a diffuse color, but ideally an image that was perhaps photographed without shadows and without noticeable depth. Then we have the roughness map, where we see the roughness of the surface. The normal map provides the direction of the faces and the height map shows the height of the surface on every pixel. But we will come back to that in detail shortly. But first, how are such textures created? How does Polyheaven, for instance, do this? To make this clear, let's imagine I want the facade of the backside of my house as a PPR texture. To get this, I have to scan it. This process is called photogrammetry. And it's so precise that it's almost like cutting out a piece of my facade. During this scanning process, you naturally get the color, displacement and normal map. The other maps are generated through parallel process, but they don't play a major role for now. Okay, so much for the basic concept. Now you have a rough idea how these maps are generated, which is not entirely unimportant. Let's move on to the displacement map because it's the simplest one. When you look at this map, you can easily remember the higher the pixel, the higher the geometrical point that corresponds to it. Simple as that. And now some points are higher and some points are lower. The displacement then deforms the surface or the geometry on which this texture is applied. Of course, it has to be subdivided, which eats performance, but it looks very good. So we remember, real geometry is created in this process. This will become important later in this video. Okay, so now let's look at the normal map. Normal maps don't represent the height, but more the direction of the surface. And this method is extremely efficient in terms of performance. I will show you why in a moment. Let's take a look at this scan and examine the normal map in more detail. A normal map, as many of you already know, consists of three primary colors, red, green and blue. Red indicates the direction of the surfaces left and right, green indicates the direction forward and backwards, and blue shows, let's say, the overall intensity of the directional changes. What's interesting here is that the blue channel is actually not really needed. We could even reproduce it afterwards ourselves. It essentially represents, to put it simply, just applying the Pythagoras theorem to X and Y, that is, red and green. If you apply the Pythagoras theorem to green and red, do a little addition and subtraction, a bit conversion, you know, you could generate the blue channel yourself afterward. But even this calculation is already done for the computer. And that's exactly what makes it very efficient for games. It runs faster on all kinds of machines. And here's the biggest difference to the displacement maps. The normal maps does not change the geometry but only affects how light behaves when it hits the surface. Okay, now you might say one changes the geometry, one changes the light behavior. Sounds completely fine. 
But no, that's not quite the case. Imagine you want to have a brick wall using a texture set. Okay, no problem, we just download the texture or we use the polyheaven add-on. Whatever it might be, we look at the color. Okay, it looks a bit flat. It's supposed to be a close-up, so we use displacement and subdivide the surface. Then we connect the normal map and whoa. Okay, here's another example. We have this stone floor, which fundamentally doesn't look bad. And now I will remove the normal map. And you will immediately see what I mean. All those black intermediate layers disappear. And now the lighting is correct. Do you see those surfaces starting to clip? So what happened here? We actually did everything correctly, right? Let's go back a few steps. The displacement map creates the geometry. Now we want to use the normal map to direct the light a bit better. But hold on, the light has already been modified by the displacement. The real geometry is already changing and redirecting the light's angle. So we are trying to double twist the light. Imagine this, we first changing the angle of the surfaces using displacement. And then we further alter the angle of the surfaces with the normal map. So for the stones we don't just have an angle nearly by 90 degrees. We now have an angle by nearly 180 degrees. And this is too much. And for some reasons this is more noticeable since Blender 4.2 maybe since the new principled bsdf2 but whatever the reason is we could welcome it because the logic behind is very clear right you can't double tilt an angle surface so you see and understand that it can't work therefore if you want to use this placement and you should definitely use it in close-up shots then leave out the normal maps both are simply baked from the same surface to a plane to generate the texture. To recap, if we scan a surface to generate the textures realistically, we place a surface underneath and bake it all down to a texture. This means all these height differences are the same everywhere on a height displacement map and on a normal map. So when you use displacement in combination with normal maps, it's just too much. Okay, but what should we use when? Good that you're asking, let's address this now. Height maps, pros and cons. First of all, using height maps creates geometry. And perhaps the downside is also that you create real geometry. Real geometry gives you incredible details in scenes where you are taking close-ups. That's truly amazing. However, if the displaced surface is too large, it can become a big problem for most computers. Second point, detail accuracy at appropriate resolution. At 4K, you already have fine details in your materials. You almost don't need more. And if you need more, you can use 8K textures. Realistic silhouettes are also a very important thing. When you use normal maps, you're not changing the geometry. However, when you view these objects from the side, the effect often falls apart because the silhouette doesn't change and remains flat. With displacement, the details are actually pulled out, which changes the silhouette as well. This can be very important for many objects, especially for stone balls. Parallax effect is also an important point. That means when you make an animation and the camera moves, with displacement you will get a parallax effect. And this is especially noticeable on the ground, for example. Okay, so now let's come to the downsides. It can become a problem for many computers. But if you use it properly, and you can definitely use it quite a lot, then it's really worth it. Second downside, high memory demand. And it's not really because of the height map. In most cases, the normal maps are using much more space. It's more because of the geometry itself and the subdivision. This creates much more memory. But again, it depends on how large your displaced surface is. The last point is fine tuning. You need a bit of fine tuning for displacement maps. For normal maps, you just put it on and it works. But for displacement maps, you have to do some fine tuning. Just a bit, not much, but it's just a point. So now normal maps, first advantage. 
very effective and less computer intense. Even the Pythagoras calculation on the blue channel is offloaded from the computer. As a result, rendering is faster, loading is faster and that's why it used in game engines. And sometimes it also depends on what kind of surface you want to represent. In some cases, normal maps are a bit better than height maps on flat floors, for example. The reason for that is that the normal map represents just a direction and sometimes this can give you more accurate details. Also simpler integration. In most types of software where textures are used, displacement doesn't always work. But the normal map always works. It's easier to integrate, it's inherently integrated in DirectX and so on. A normal map always works. Disadvantages, no real deformation. Only light and shadows are affected and often there are issues with baking. I also sometimes have issues with that. With normal maps there are often more problems when baking. Not just in Blender, it also depends on unwrapping and so on. And maybe at that point I always recommend Marmoset Toolbag for baking normals. I think it's better than Substance or Blender. This leads to the following. Normal maps are better for games, game engines in general and for slow computers. But if you have a close up scene and maybe a good computer, you should definitely use displacement. It gives you more clear details, parallax effect and so on. It just looks better. So what should you take away from this video? Normal maps and displacement maps are always based on the same principle of baking, which starts from a flat surface. Therefore, they contain the same surface data. Displacement maps are changing the geometry in a real way, while normal maps only influences the shadows and the light's behavior. If you use both on the same time, you can get shading artifacts and bad results. In modern workflows, especially with high resolution 4K textures, a normal map is no longer necessary. I highly recommend to use displacement map and in any case don't combine normal and displacement maps at the same time. I have struggled with this topic myself for quite a while because it seemed absolutely logical for me but I was surprised that the topic isn't really addressed anywhere. At this point you should now clearly understand when to use a normal map and when to use a displacement map. I think that's pretty straightforward and displacement can be handled by many computers. It's not always as demanding as it seems at first glance. And now you can also use it with Eevee, which is absolutely great. Okay, I hope this video was useful for you and I will see you next time.